Hi, we are going to talk about equilibrium. Now with this equilibrium, we're going to use what's called ice tables, and I'll show you what that means. Um, there are really three components um, when we're talking about ice tables, um, three values that you need. Typically, you're given two and you have to find the third. So here are the three components. Um, we're going to have our equilibrium constant, so that's your K value. The initial concentration, so notice I put that in brackets, um, we're always dealing with molarity. And then the equilibrium concentration, that's the final concentration. So we're going to start with an initial concentration, reactants go to products, products go to reactants, it goes, 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 until finally those equal rates occur and we hit equilibrium. Um, so in this particular question, I'm going to write down um, what they've given us, but I want to read it to you so that you can translate it into your homework of how to take what they give you and, and apply it to an ice table. So here's the question. It says a solution is prepared by dissolving 0.05 molar iodine cyclohexane. It's this crazy molecule right there in one liter solution. Like, okay, great, they rigged it for us. We are going to have an initial concentration, this one right here. Um, so my initial concentration of that is going to be 0 0.05 molar because they did 0 0.05 moles in one liter. So that's what I start with, okay? Um, and they're going to dissolve it in a solvent. The total solution volume, it says it's the one liter, when the reaction has come to equilibrium at 35 degrees C. Now, a little note, remember when we're dealing with um, when we're dealing with K, the temperature has to be held constant. When we're dealing with equilibrium, if you change the temperature, it changes the value of K. That's going to, calculating how it changes, that's beyond um, the scope of a first year chemistry class. All you have to know is that if you change temperature, it actually value, changes the value of K. Um, and Le Chatelier's principle, you predict how it changes, but you don't have to calculate the actual value. All right, so, it comes to equilibrium at 35 degrees C, and then the concentration of just the iodine, so at equilibrium. Um, so, and I, I want to stress this, it says has come to equilibrium. Big, big clue there. The concentration of the iodine is 0 0.035 molar, 0 0.035 molar. And that was just for the iodine. I'll put the I2 right there. Okay, so as I look at this, knowing that there are always three components, and when you read a question, you're always looking for those three components. Um, you go, all right, they didn't give us K. They did give us an initial concentration. They did give us an equilibrium concentration, which means we can find K. So that's where I start my students off is get used to looking for those three components. You're always looking for those three components. Now, how do you set up an ice table? Um, I write my chemical equation and then take a line. I know it's going to feel like you take a lot of paper. It's okay. Take a line for each of these. You're going to do I, C, and E. Okay, and I'm going to write underneath each of these what they mean. Let's see, let me erase that for you so it's not confusing. So the I stands for initial. This is going to be your initial concentration. So that's initial. Um, and let's put a reminder, I put brackets here to try and you know, give you that clue, but let me remind you of those brackets, it has to be a molarity. So you are always dealing with moles per liter moles of solute divided by liter of solution. If you need to look up um, this uh, about molarity, go to my playlist on solutions. Okay, C stands for change. So this is as the reaction is going reactants, products, products, back to reactants, what's happening? E stands for equilibrium. So there's going to be your concentration when we hit that beautiful equal rate. Um, just so you know, some people call these rice tables. They'll put an R right here for reaction, do reaction, initial change, equilibrium. Um, so if you, your teacher might say rice instead of ice. I just say ice, and it's understood that you have to write down that chemical reaction. Okay, so now we're going to start filling out the ice table. Our initial concentration was this 0.05 molar. 0 0.05 molar. Um, now that's what you have is only reactants. That's all you've got. So we have zero of the products. Now eventually I'll teach you um, what's called a common ion. When you start with a product, but 90% of what you're going to do, all you have is the reactant. So here's your reactant and nothing's happened. Um, so this is before the reaction happens, what you start with, um, which means zero products. We haven't made any products yet. Now, the change, what's going to happen here? 
Well, some of those reactants are going to be consumed and they're going to produce the products. Um, so the change, we don't know the amount that's going to be consumed. We're going to use it as a symbol of X. That's our unknown or an unknown, I'll say. Um, so we're going to lose an amount of reactants and then we're going to gain um, the products. Now here, stoichiometry comes in. Let's look at our molar ratios. For every one mole that we lose of the reactant, we're going to gain one mole of the C6H10 and one mole of the I2. So I can take those molar coefficients and put them in front of that X. For every one mole that I lose of my reactant, we will gain one mole of the C6H10 and one mole of the I2. Now, sometimes all students say, well, Mrs. Lott, this is going to go in reverse, isn't it? It's true that it is going to um, go forward and reverse, forward and reverse, forward and reverse until it hits that beautiful um, equilibrium. Um, we are going to do overall net loss, overall net gain once it comes into equilibrium, okay? Once it comes into equilibrium. So once we're at equilibrium, we've lost an amount of this and we've gained one mole each of those. Um, that ratio, the one to one to one ratio. Um, so here's your big takeaway on writing the change. Um, when you only have reactants here at the beginning, you're going to do subtraction, okay? Because we've got to lose that reactant. The products will all be addition. Use X as your symbol, because we don't know how much is lost, how much is gained. And just look at the coefficient put that in front. If this had been a two, I would have done a two X right there. Okay, E is the really, really easy part. So I'm gonna draw a line and all you have to do is do I plus C equals E. Let me say that again, I plus C equals E. So I'm going to add the I and the C. We're going to get 0 0.05 minus X and then X and X. Zero plus X is X, zero plus X is X. Okay, now you might recall they gave us another, another piece of information. They had given us the initial concentration, I wrote that down, and they gave us the equilibrium concentration for iodine. Well, I have determined that the equilibrium concentration of iodine is X. Well, they told me equilibrium concentration is 0 0.035. <gasps> Therefore, X equals 0 0.035. Ooh, that's slick. Um, so in a very sly way, they gave us a piece of um, the ice table. They gave us the equilibrium. So that's our X. So I can go ahead and plug in X for all of these. This will be 0 0.035. Let's go ahead and solve for this one. It'd be 0 0.035 minus 0 0.035 equals 0 0.015 molar. So those are our values at equilibrium. Okay, so think this through. We start with this 0.05 um, iodine uh, re, uh, compound, this cycle iodine right here. It reacts, reacts, goes forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward, reverse. Finally, when it reaches that beautiful equilibrium, what's left is 0.015 of the reactant and then 0 0.035, 0 0.035 of each of those products. So now we can find K because we have all of the equilibrium concentrations. Um, I'm going to write that over here. So K, um, this is going to be products of our reactants. So we'll have the concentration of the C6H10 um, times the concentration of I2. Remember when you have multiple reactants or products, you multiply those concentrations divided by the C6H10 I2. They all have one coefficient, so they all have understood one exponent. Now I can just plug my numbers in. So K is going to equal, we will have 0 0.035 times 0 0.035 divided by my equilibrium for the iodine. Remember that was 0 0.015. Um, now just a reminder, K is unit less. It just shows us the ratio of products compared to reactants. We're at that beautiful equilibrium. So plug that into our calculator and we get a 12, Actually, I'm just going around that at 12, since I had two six six on each of those. So K equals 12. A little follow-up question for you, is that product or reactant favored? Remember, K is products over reactants. If I have a number greater than one, 
it means I have more products than I do reactants when we're at that beautiful equilibrium. So this would be product favorite because it's greater than one. Okay, and there you have it. Have a good day. Thank you.